From the city to rural North America, this is Rural America Live, connecting the people who grow America's food and fiber with those who enjoy it. Call in, let's talk. It's Rural America Live. Last year we had a wheat average of 102 bushel an acre. Right now we're seeing 105 bushel. The liquid carbon, it's like a jump start. This stuff will get up, popped out of the ground, and get going a little faster, and we'll get ahead of the game again. Everybody always asks, what's it cost? It's not what it costs, it's actually what it saves you. We're seeing the 30 to $40 net income to the bottom line. You spread that over the acres, it adds up. You gotta try it, at least try a little bit and see your results, and most likely they'll be coming back again next year getting more. And welcome to our program tonight. I'm Mark Oppold. Another growing season coming to an end. And tonight we're joined once again by our folks from Monty's Plant Food. The next hour with me in studio, Joe Dedman, Vice President of Agronomy, and Gary Coughlin, Certified Crop Advisor and a Certified Professional Agronomist. Welcome to RFD TV. And you, as you, we talked earlier now on uh, Rural Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 80 tonight across the country. That's awesome. It is. That, that, is, that is truly awesome. Great addition since the last time you were here. Well, uh, another season uh, coming to an end here tonight. We're going to take a look at some of the challenges. Every year brings new challenges, uh, no doubt, in one way or another uh, to our folks out there uh, raising uh, our crops. We're going to uh, spend a little time discussing winter wheat tonight. That's not something you wanted to focus on. Uh, and by the way, uh, as always, viewers and those of you listening in on Rural Radio, Sirius XM, we'll be opening our telephone lines later in the program for you to join us and ask Asking questions of Joe and Gary, and by the way, the good folks at Monty's know that uh, maybe uh, you'll have questions well after the program is over, and they've got their staff on hand taking uh, telephone calls at least an hour after this program is over. We'll be giving you that toll-free number as well. So lots of ways for you to get your questions answered as we come to the end of the growing season. Joe, let's start with you and uh, talk about the growing season that we've uh, getting close to this is kind of the payoff time for you right. folks get to see right. uh, what do we experience but every year is different what a difference a year makes oh my yes you know mark i've been in agriculture now in the in the industry for uh, around 37 years yeah. been with monty since 2005 and every season has been different and and this year is no exception in fact it's probably the most exceptional uh, we started off last year with such drought conditions in fact we even addressed it on one of the earlier shows of all the drought issues that farmers faced. Mm -hmm. Well, then we turn right around here in, in this year, and lo and behold, we get way too much rain. They get a really late start in the, into the season, and crops were planted in really too wet of conditions. Uh, the, the compaction resulted. A lot of times they went out and planted a little too, too wet in the fields, and then they've been fighting some of these issues all season long of how do I rescue my, co my crop out of these kinds of conditions, and that's part of what we'll be dealing with here tonight. Uh, even in Kentucky, uh, some of the, even the XM viewers may have drove by some tobacco fields that looked all yellow and scalded, and this is what happens with too much water. We just put, it, it drowned it out the tobacco, it's, it choked off the oxygen from the root system, and it just scalds, and really that tobacco is just worth nothing. A lot of times farmers will bush hog it down and disc it up. Wow. So there's the scenario, Gary. No surprise. A lot of folks that get the crop in the ground, the market's still reacting to that here. What are some of the recommended strategies that you might uh, suggest tonight for our producers to follow uh, in this fall and into next year? Well, Mark, I'm like Joe. I'm a certified crop advisor, and I've been in the industry for 44 years. And there is no doubt when you think you've seen it all, here comes another year with something else that kind of throws a a kink in the situation. Yeah. But there are some solutions that can be had out there if some guys would follow some guidelines. For instance, we have a picture here of a cornfield that came out of Indiana where a farmer split this field and he used Monty's Agrihance S, which is their starter fertilizer, on half the field and didn't on the other half the field. And I think that that is quite noticeable for the um, radio people uh, the where he treated appears to be is it maybe six i don't know six eight inches yeah. taller mm -hmm. it's far greener it's far healthier looking and he's got that crop off to a healthy start now having said that 
We use Monty's Agrihan's S out in our research farm as our starter all the time. Mm -hmm. And here is a picture of our one of our soybean areas out there, our soybean plots. We have about 40 different plots out there treated this way. So these beans look excellent. Next shot we have and is... And by the way, again, for, for the radio listeners, they, it's, they're, they're already canopy. There's oh, beautifully yeah. uh, and, and very uniform. There, yes. there, is, there is a level across the field that you could ever want. And what we're looking at now is some plants that we dug up showing the root system on those plants and the amount of nodules that are on those roots. Now, we're the first to admit that we used a liquid uh, soybean inoculant in with our Agrihans S. But the Agrihans S, and this was applied in furrow on the seed, helps to bring about all those nodules. It encourages all those nodules. Mm -hmm. And then we have our corn looks fantastic also. Uh, actually, I would say that most of our corn plants have two ears on them. Wow. Some have three ears on them and occasionally we'll see one with a fourth ear trying to form. I'm not sure that fourth ear will ever amount to anything, but we've been lucky in that we've had timely rains the entire summer. So we followed the Monty's program of using the Agrihans S as a starter in the row on the seed on both our corn and our beans, and then we came back over the top foliar when we thought the time was right, depending upon the growth stage of that crop, with our Agrihans V, which is our, our vegetative application. And I would say to you that as far as uh, anyone out there still with double crop beans, I'm sure that they have the opportunity to come in now with Agrihans V over top of those beans to uh, help still maintain any blooms that are on those plants, but also to help with a better pod set and also help as far as uh, setting the seed in those pods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, viewers, we know that the crops are further behind this year, and uh, many growers are looking at a delayed harvest. Uh, and this is where we talk about our wheat uh, producers out there. This has been uh, farmers thinking about uh, the, the late start to their wheat crop. Uh, and Joe, let's talk about some advice you'd have for those producers out there as they talk about and look at their 2014 program. Right, and we've talked about that a few times here on this show as well, uh, especially putting out the wheat this fall. They're probably going to be under the gun, putting it out as fast as they can after harvest because harvest will be a little late. But that's where it all starts, is right after harvest, as soon as they can get back out there, is they put on our, our liquid carbon product. And in many cases, uh, farmers are adding another one of our products, which is called AgriSweet, to help break down that residue, that corn stubble. Mm -hmm. But when they do that, they also increase the soil biology, they increase their soil health, and they help to loosen those compacted areas. So as soon as they have planted, either before or right after they've planted, we also encourage them to put down the Agrihans S, just like we have done on corn and soybeans. And then once they've done that, as later on, usually at around tillering time, or, or especially after January, uh, that they go out to feed those plants, the more they, they come in with our Agrihans V pro product, mm -hmm. And those are usually at a half a gallon rate to the acre, so the farmers can, will know what kind of rate to use. And so that also helps get everything off and going. And you know, farmers have been using a, our program that we mentioned here tonight, uh, even on corn and soybeans, but also on their wheat. And they have seen wh exactly what Dr. Heinegger, which we'll see here in a minute, will tell us. 10 to 15 bushel average yield increases when they're using our program. But we've also seen a, 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 a grower there in Kentucky that has gone along with that program. As you can see here, we have on the screen some of the components of the wheat yield. And it all starts with heads per acre. So we, we have to have the plants on the ground. We have to have them to tiller, produce the heads. Then heads have to put on kernels per head. And then also part of yield is weight per kernel. So we want to feed that crop as we go along to enhance the heads to develop, the kernels to develop, and then to fill those kernels that puts test weight in it. Mm -hmm. And this grower that we're going to hear from 
Uh, he has even seen yields as high as up in the 30 plus bushel uh, acre. And with the price of wheat, regardless of where it is during the growing oh, yeah. season, that extra bushels, that's bottom line in the pocket. It is, it is. And let's hear from that producer right now who discusses the benefits of Monty's Agrihands on wheat. This is Ray Tucker, a producer, as Joe mentions, from Kentucky. This year we've got uh, 160 acres of wheat. Uh, we've got uh, right at 700 acres of corn and uh, about 600 acres of soybeans. Uh, this year has been a very trying year for us with all the rain we've had, even though we're very blessed to have it uh, compared to last year's drought. Um, but so far this year, things are looking really well. In our, in our wheat, uh, we're using the Monty's program. Uh, we're using the Carbon, uh, we're using the uh, Agrihance V and Agrihance R. The only reason we're not using Agrihance S is simply because the drill's not set up uh, to, you, to put the starter in furrow. Um, what we're doing is we're doing light tillage um, before, before drilling the wheat. Um, we're putting a gallon of, of uh, Monty's carbon down pre-plant. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll till the soil, plant the wheat. Um, and then we put another half gallon on each of our two split applications of nitrogen in the spring. Um, and then we're also using the, the V um, uh, up in you know February when we're putting on herbicide and then we're using the Agrihance R uh, when we're come back and put our uh, fungicide on, uh, you know, later on in the spring. By using the carbon, uh, it seems like it's, uh, the wheat is uh, uptaking the nutrients. Uh, we're seeing more tillering in the fall. Uh, used to be we were seeing all our tillers in the spring. Uh, we're getting that in the fall now, uh, which results in higher yields. What we're doing in, with the Monty's program, uh, we're seeing um, higher yields. And over the last several years, this is our second year using the full Monty's program, except for the Agrihan S on our wheat. And what we were seeing, we were seeing yields in the, in the upper 80s to lower 90s. Um, and, and last year and this year both, uh, we're, for, so last year we had a wheat average of 102 bushel an acre, uh, which is really unheard of in this area. Um, and, and this year, we're see, right now, we're seeing 105 bushel. Uh, so, you know, it's safe to say a 10 to 15 bushel increase that we're seeing using the Monty's program. But when you see 105 bushel wheat, you tend not to worry about the double crop beans right behind it near as much. It means another 30 to $40 on the bottom line. Um, because, you know, it's 70, if you're getting, um, you know, another, so let's say 10 bushels of wheat at $7, that's $70 more an acre. It's costing us probably somewhere between 30 and $40 to use the Monty's program per acre. So we're seeing a 30 to $40 net income to the bottom line. And you spread that over the acres, it, it, it adds up. Testimonial from Ray Tucker, again, the producer from uh, Kentucky. That is a great return on investment, Derry. Just a couple of thoughts you might want to share with viewers and listeners uh, from that testimonial. Well, Mark, I don't believe we could get a finer testimonial than what think. Ray gave us. <laughs> You'd like to have a lot of those, wouldn't you? Uh, Ray kind of... If he said it once, he said it three or four times, he follows a Monty's program. And he started off by saying that he's putting down a gallon of liquid carbon, uh, pre-plant, and uh, lightly disc it in. And then he comes back anytime he split applies his nitrogen and he puts on a half a gallon of Agrihance V, which is our foliar feed vegetative product. And then he comes back in anytime he puts on his a fungicide program and uses Agrihansar at another half gallon per acre. And he, he mentioned that he's seeing more tillers in the fall, which we'll hear from Dr. Heinegger in a minute, and he said that's when you increase your yield is getting those fall tillers. But he has increased uh, his wheat yield, I believe he said, from 80 some bushels to the acre to last year he was 102. And this year he was 105, mm -hmm. and he he said on an average he feels like he's getting 10 to 15 bushels per acre, and he's putting, I believe he said 30 to 40 dollars an acre to the bottom, uh, 30 40 dollars profit to the acre, on the bottom line, and, and you know he he's just tickled to death. But I uh, reemphasize again, Ray has a program in place. And he's following that program. Well, let's talk a little bit more about that, Joe. I think that's something you wanted to make sure that viewers and listeners could follow along in a program that really works through the whole growing season. Yeah, and that's part of our Agrihance three-step program that we even showed there on the screen a while ago. 
It is a true nutrient management program. Mm -hmm. uh, our products are designed to deliver the nutrients to the plant uh, at the key growth stages, so it's all concentrated on the growth stages. Uh, we have a chart on the screen. In fact, uh, even our XM viewers could go on our website when they have a chance and see this chart. But it, it's the different growth stages of wheat, and we've outlined on that chart uh, different times such as tillering or early when we plant it and get it out of the ground as we use Agrihans S and then prior to that we've put down the carbon. But then as you go along and as it, it continues to grow into close to joining stage, we're putting the Agrihans V on and then as Gary said, it come in with other fungicides or even herbicides, we're putting the Agrihans R. So it's truly a program approach to feeding that plant to help it to develop the heads and the kernels and the test weight that's in that wheat to get the maximum amount of yield that you can out of that. You mentioned, what uh, Gary, you mentioned, uh, and even uh, that pointing out that Ray had talked about tillering. Mm -hmm. um, and why is that so important when you talk about wheat here? And, and let's, let's make sure we don't gloss over that. Okay. Well, let's make sure that everybody understands that every tiller is a potential head. So if you remember from Joe's slide that he had up there, one of the things that we're looking for is number of heads per acre. Now I can't tell you that this is factual, but it would be an opinion that the average uh, wheat plant probably only puts out maybe four, maybe five tillers. But what if, what if we could cause that plant, we could stimulate that plant to put out just one more tiller per plant over an entire acre. By doing that, if I didn't make a uh, calculation mistake, <laughs> that's about five bushels more to the acre. Just that, by doing just by, that? Just one, one tiller. tiller. So what if we could take that up to two tillers? Well now we've, we've taken that to an even higher level. Sure. And uh, today I believe the wheat is probably around, what, six dollars a bushel, yeah. something like that? So that's, that's uh, extra profit going on to your bottom line. Well, let's hear from another expert on, on this topic that'll help viewers and listeners. Uh, Dr. Ron Heinegger is from North Carolina State University. He's done a lot of research on, and very useful research on this topic as well and wants to share those thoughts with us. I'm Dr. Ron Heinegger. I'm from North Carolina State University, the Department of Crop Science. I'm stationed out at the Vernon James Center here in Plymouth, North Carolina. Um, my primary responsibility lies in corn and, and wheat cropping systems. I do a lot of applied research in both of those, uh, working with different management practices. What I do is I go out and look at man different management practices in the field. We uh, find out which ones are working best for the farmer, and then we go out and talk to farmers about uh, uh, what uh, practices they should use, how, what, how to combine them with different uh, management things like populations or hybrids to get the best results and highest economic returns. I conduct a number of different types of research, uh, everything from, from plant physiology research, looking at silking timing, uh, in wheat, we do a lot of work on tiller development, trying to look at the physiology of the, uh, the plant, uh, determining how it determines when to put on tillers, when to, take a, when to actually cause a tiller to, to abort. Uh, right now, we're looking at seed weight in, in wheat, what causes uh, seed weight to increase, uh, what are the role of temperature and water in that, uh, in that process. In addition to that, uh, as I said earlier, I do a lot of work with uh, looking at different practices side by side with a checker, you know. Is this practice better than doing nothing at all? And how much more yield does it give the grower? Well, I recommend Monty's because it, has, it does a lot of things that that plant really needs. First of all, it helps stimulate those tillers. When we went and looked at tiller development here over the last three to five years, we found out that one of that the thing that plant needs is a lot of, of early growth, and Monty's uh, carbon helps stimulate early root development and early growth and helps that plant set tillers. Tillers in a wheat plant are developed early. It, it's when that first 60 days after that plant comes up, that's the time to put tillers on and an application of Monty's carbon at planting time helps uh, stimulate that plant to grow faster, put more tillers on, and of course uh, lead to a better yields. The other things I've seen with Monty's products that I like a lot is, is reducing wheat burn. We do a lot of uh, top dressing in wheat in North Carolina with liquid products like 30% UAN. Oftentimes uh, it 
the time when it's heating up, uh, that wheat's growing rapidly, it's very susceptible to leaf burn. So I like uh, to put in a quart of Monty's carbon uh, and to an acre, and it improves that uh, uh, plant's growth and resists that leaf burn that we oftentimes see with uh, UAN. The one thing that I like about Monty's product is, is both the, the quality. I think that whenever you're uh, buying a product like liquid carbon, you want the, uh, a pure product that's not containing a lot of different things that may or may not uh, have an adverse effect on the plant. Monty's is a very uh, uh, pure product. It's, it's a product that, that works very well with mixes and, and, and things like UAN. It mixes well because it doesn't have any other contaminants. So I really like that, uh, the purity, the quality of the product. From what we've seen, our research actually showed that we get about uh, 10 to 15 more bushels uh, to an acre of wheat anytime we've used the Monty's uh, product. So it, the farmer has a good opportunity when you get that kind of uh, return uh, on your uh, yield to get a return on investment, particularly with wheat in the $7 range. It doesn't take too many bushels to pay for, for a Monty's application. Dr. Heinegger, again, comments you can tell, tillering, uh, very important, uh, Joe, at, an element for the wheat production. And before we go to break, uh, uh, maybe just some summary thoughts from, from listening to uh, Dr. Yeah, he, he definitely brought out the whole fact about tillering happens in the fall. Um, Gary and I both have discussed that, and we were always of the opinion of, of mostly in the spring. But Dr. Heinegger has really done some great research over the last five or six years uh, to show that he has really been able to prove that tillering in the fall generates the most bushels. We have a couple of charts that's on the screen. It's like a, a bar graph chart, but it's showing that uh, we've increased in 2011 16 bushel over a control, or, uh, like a starter, or no starter. And then in 2012, we also got a 10 bushel increase up there as well. So it's following the numbers that he's talking about. And very good. And with that, we're going to take our first break. Short break, we come back. We're going to move in our discussion, move on. Lesson in Humix 101. Many of you may have heard about Humix. It's kind of a buzzword of sorts. And we're glad to have Gary and Joe with us tonight. We're going to talk about what it really means and what it means to you, and more importantly. So stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. And welcome back to Rural America Live. I'm Mark Oppel with our friends from Monty's Plant Food. Before we took that break, we were talking about some of the challenges of the season, a wet season and uh, too wet to plant in many areas, delayed planting. Uh, but a lot of talk about uh, recommendations for you folks with winter wheat. Now let's take a look at broaden things out a little bit, uh, Joe and Gary, and, and going to give us a lesson on uh, Humix 101. And Gary, I'm going to let you start out. <laughs> Mark, Humix, uh, one thing I've learned over four years with Monty is, is that you get west of the Mississippi River and Humix are fairly well understood. You get east of the Mississippi River and it seems as though this is something that's all kind of new to us mm -hmm. and we don't understand it. But what we need to understand is that humic uh, substances are basically naturally occurring products. Every soil out there has some percent organic matter, whether it's 1% or it's 30%. And in the biodegradation of that organic matter is produced humus, which is highly refined. Well then from that humus comes humic substances. And then a humic acid is the principal component of a humic substance that works on, and Joe's gonna discuss, I think here briefly, all the benefits of humic acids and what it does not only in the soil to increase soil health and the microbial activity, but also what it does for plants. So it's a naturally occurring product. Well, pick it up from there if you would, Joe, and help us out here in understanding it better. Well, and, and that's what Gary was talking about. There is a lot of buzz, especially east of the Mississippi River, uh, humix have begun to come to the forefront. In fact, you may have some articles in some magazines nowadays that talks about it. Mm -hmm. But if there's been one thing that farmers have probably been missing or lacking over the years, it's what humix really do. And so what Monty's has done is we developed a, a, a website. It's called thetruthabouthumix.com. So we have put on there industry standards, we put questions, 
We've answered those questions. We've tried to help farmers to understand more about how beneficial, especially our humic is to application on their farms and what kind of difference that that would make. Yeah, well, Gary, what, I guess I'll just, that, thanks a lot, Joe, leads me into the question, what makes Monty's humics different? The only reason I brought Joe along with me is to help me with this demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, well, your time is here, Joe. <laughs> so we're going to talk about humic substances out there. And, and those again on uh, radio, we've got two uh, glasses of water here. And Joe, uh, explain what you're doing here. I am putting in a competitor's product that is a humic product on the market today. On one of the jars. And it is insoluble. And Gary will talk a little bit about that. In the next jar, I will be putting Monty's product in, which is soluble, and that's the tremendous difference that it makes on farmers' soils. All right. So he's going to be dipping in there, in a, but just a just a, ta a teaspoon or so is what you're putting in there. Right. And again, if we could uh, again visually, you're seeing the very quick dissolving. Dissolving. That's a good thank and, you. And going to it's it's very active product. And we even see uh, energy coming off of those little uh, granules dissolving. And, and that is part of what makes our product tremendously different than anything else on the market today. So I really want to thank Joe for taking my speech there, Mark. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what we've got here is the fact that a lot of products out there that's being sold are humix and they claim they're soluble. Well, they have to be some degree of soluble to get into the soil to perform and do what we're talking about, the benefits. But Monty's is highly soluble. If you could see this, uh, you guys on Sirius XM can't, but it's already basically in solution. Right. And the competitor's product is either floating on top of the water or it's settled to the bottom. And frankly, we have tried this and let this sit in our office as long as a month, and it never did go into solution. Now, there are many companies out there that have some kind of proprietary technology that makes their products better, no matter what type of business they're in. And that's the secret that Monty says, is that they have been able to produce a highly soluble product but also a highly active product so that it goes to work immediately upon application of the soil to do everything that it does as far as improving the soil health and the biology and the plant health, et cetera. So let's talk a little bit more, Joe, about the benefits of using Humix. Well, and, and that's part, of, we've just scratched the surface here, but many things that the benefits uh, that, that Humix make uh, in general, but even more so what our product does, it, it increases the biological uh, release of nutrients so that your soil biology is working for you. Uh, it stimulates root growth so we get a whole lot more, a bigger root mass. Mm -hmm. uh, the nutrient uptake is increased from those larger root masses. Uh, it helps with photosynthesis. It helps the plant with res respiration. Uh, we have more mineral uh, bioactivity and availability and stabilization in the soil. So it, it's really just a benefit to whatever the farmer is doing. It makes his applications of his fertilizers and everything else work better and we get excellent nitrogen stabilization with this product as well and increased fertilizer efficiency and we even boost uh, the disease resistance in the plant through the health of the plant. You can tell, can you tell, uh, I'm maybe aging myself a little bit, it seems like the soil growing up uh, when we had the earthworms that were working in the in the, the bacteria, if, yes. if I'm correct here, that would, that broke down and made that soil very pliable, and mm -hmm. you could just feel the nutrient value in there. Sometimes, and, the, and now you have the hard pan. And, yeah. and, and, am I kind of well, where we're where we're what we're at here, and yeah. why you're getting the attention you're getting? And we've seen that now because we go back to the first slides, based on the weather conditions that farmers have, have farmed under, it's hurt the soil. The the dry weather compacted it. Too much rain, too heavy rains also compact it, make it tougher. So they're not working under the ideal conditions that they used to years ago when the soil had so much tilth to it. Well, that's part of what our product does. It brings the tilth back, back. to the soil. And with, Mark, if, yeah, you, please. If, if you want to get an idea of how healthy your soil is, go out and uh, count the earthworm holes in the field. That will give you an idea that my soil is healthy or it's not healthy. 
because right. it doesn't, it's not uh, stabilizing and, and stabilized enough to support right. that environment for that earthworm. Right. Well, you know, there's nobody, no boss better than a producer to talk about this, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, we have a video to take a look at that featuring uh, Shane uh, Kylo, producer from North Dakota, who's been using Monty's liquid carbon humic product, and uh, he has some thoughts to share. Shane Kylo from Mabel, North Dakota. Here we are mainly corn, soybeans. Uh, we're pushing about 4,000 acres of corn and a couple quarters of soybeans this year. This year is our first year using Montes. Uh, did a lot of research on it. Started looking into the stuff. I mean, the N, P, and K, it just it makes it more available. You get, you know, your compaction. It's just, it's an all around just a good deal. We applied Montes this spring with all our, you know, liquid fertilizer. We were using about a half a gallon of liquid carbon with all the liquid fertilizer. So Monty's products, I mean, they're so simple to use. I mean, it, you can get them in 275 shuttles, two and a half gallons. So whatever size farmer you are, you can, you know, try whatever you'd like at any different volume. Uh, mixing, we, I mean, it, it mixes just great. Today we're running the John Deere DB88, an 88 foot 48 row 22 inch planter. We are putting liquid fertilizer down in furrow with right below the seed. Uh, all the liquid fertilizer is on the planter. We can carry 750 gallons a shot. We're putting down about six gallons per acre. So I'm, with the carbon, yeah, I mean, all our, all our liquids mixed in with a half a gallon per acre of the carbon. So one thing with the, the carbon this year that made, really caught my eye is we're, we're way behind schedule this year. It's gonna be a late spring. Uh, with the liquid carbon, it's like a jump start. Hopefully, I mean, this stuff will get out, popped out of the ground, get a little, going a little faster and we'll get ahead of the game again. I've heard a lot of good results from other farmers and reading on the websites of different people talking there. I mean, they've said nothing good, good about how much faster your corn will pop out of the ground, good results at the end, dry down, the breakdown of the tissues, especially if you're doing a lot of corn on corn, it's really supposed to help the breakdown of the tissue to get your going blacker and you gotta try it. I mean. At least try a little bit and get some see your results and most likely they'll be coming back again next year getting more. Comments from Shane Kylo, uh, producer, and again the website, The Truth About Humix. About humix. Well there's Monty's plant food, yeah. uh, that works <laughs> as well. That's right. Uh, but uh, oh, before we have another one from North Dakota, but Gary, I want you to uh, talk about uh, what uh, Shane had to say. Well, first of all, Shane, I'm highly impressed with your planner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Our, again, our, our Sirius XM. How many? What was her? How many? Forty-eight. Rows. Forty-eight rows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, just like everybody else, he said this has been a trying year to try to get things done because of all the rain. But he was using a half a gallon of liquid carbon in with his uh, starter fertilizer uh, that he was using, I believe, in a tube of two and said that he was using six gallons per acre. And I guess the take home point of all of that, he said that the biggest thing he noticed was that the liquid carbon jump started. Yeah. His, his uh, fertility program and popped that ground out, uh, popped that seed out of the soil sooner and it was a healthier plant. Uh, he said that uh, he had no mixing problems whatsoever in using it and that he also noticed that in residue management, he, I think he talked about the plant tissue, but he's talking about residue management, that he's noticed how it does help break down that corn stover from year to year so it's easier to plant in the next year. We're going to stay in North Dakota. Another producer, this is Billy Fisher, going to share some thoughts as well about the uh, use of Humix and the Monty's products as well. Uh, Billy Fisher from Madden, North Dakota. We seed around 9,000 acres. Half goes in small grains and the other half is row crop, sunflowers and corn. And we've been using the Monty's products for six to seven years. And this will continue to keep using because of the results we have with them. And we use starter, we use their liquid carbon and the seed start in row with the, small, uh, the row crops. We see good results. Now we switch to the Agrahans S, it's more convenient yet. It, it was pretty convenient to start out with. And everybody always asks, what's the cost? It's not what it costs, it's actually what it saves you from using conventional fertilizer. We still use conventional fertilizer, but we utilize more of it so you can cut the rates of it. 
and to get more use out of it. So it's, it's what it saves you in the long run. It's what it saves you. And we, foliage fertilizer, that's like a must on top of any crop. Anytime our sprayer goes across the ground, we got the, the foliage fertilizer in it because we see results in it. All the time you see results. And between that and it, what it helps the use of the chemical, it makes the chemical work better. It mixes with any chemical. So it's, it's not, and it's non-corrosive. Your sprayer don't get rusty from it because of the no salt base in it. Just good results, nothing but results. Get another producer, this again from North Dakota, Billy Fisher, uh, with his thoughts about Monty's carbon products. We want to open our telephone lines. We've got a lot of information we've given you already, viewers and listeners. No matter if you're listening or watching, the number is the same. Toll free to join us right now and talk to Gary and Joe. 877-731-6733. Again, toll free 877-731-6733. Joe, a little bit uh, quick wrap up of what uh, Billy had to say. Well, Billy really emphasized exactly what we said about what Humix do. Uh, and he was talking about he's been using it now for six or seven years. And he's seen all these kinds of results happening. Uh, he sees a, a lot better efficiency use out of his fertilizer. You heard him say that he cut back, but he still uses fertilizer, but it makes it all work better and it works faster and, and more efficient for him. And so he's been a real good uh, farmer up in that area uh, promoting our product. Gary, and it talks, you know, one thing I want to talk about here as we look for our, or listen for our callers, by the way, away from them coming in, is that Monty's products are very useful in residue management. Uh, talk about that if you would. Well, Mark, what we're talking about here is the breakdown of the fodder, particularly of corn, uh, corn stalks mm -hmm. at the end of the season uh, between harvest time and uh, next spring planting and the reason we want are interested in that is several reasons one whether it's right or wrong I have always been taught that about 70 percent of the potassium in a corn plant it can be returned to the soil through the release from it from the breakdown of residue so for our people on uh, listening on radio what we're showing here now is a cornfield with Part of the corn is standing and part of it has already been harvested. So what we would be interested in doing at that point in time is going through when we're through harvesting, taking a bat wing and chopping that, uh, that fodder up, getting it down on the ground, as much exposure as we can. And then we would come in with our liquid carbon, our liquid humic, as part of our residue management program mm -hmm. and we would use that liquid carbon, liquid humic at two quarts to the acre, the agri suite at a quart to the acre and if a farmer has availability of 28-30% uh, liquid nitrogen, if he would put two or three gallons of that in there along with it, what we are actually doing is helping to feed the microbial population um, that is so critical for the soil. And in that microbial population, we have all this bacteria, all this fungi, all this algae, all the protozoa. We have even earthworms and all the beneficial uh, nematodes. And the, uh, the um, radio viewers can't see this, but if we just take, for instance, bacteria, it's been estimated there are as much as three million up to a billion different uh, types of bacteria in the soil. So if we, ha if we want a, a good, healthy soil, we want as much of that micro, uh, that mi soil biology, that microbial population as we can get. And that kind of alludes back to what you said just a few minutes ago, how in earlier days, the soil was um, more pliable. Mm -hmm. We had a good earth smell to it and everything. So that's exactly what we want, and that's where liquid carbon can come in. And again, viewers and listeners, in addition to residue management that Gary just covered, the Monty's liquid carbon can help with some of the nutrient issues that many of you face that come from litter and manure applications. And Joe, I want you to talk about that before we take another break here. Could I interrupt? Please. One, th one, one thing, 
One thing that we're hearing, at least out in Kentucky, is we've had a lot of weed pressure this year. So farmers are talking about going in this fall after harvest and making a post uh, herbicide application to burn those weeds down. And the reason for that is, is that those weeds next spring, those winter annuals, are keeping the soil from drying up as quick as it can. So if they can kill that all now, they feel like that they're going to get a little bit of a jump next year in planting. Well, if they're going to end with a burn down in the fall, if they put a half a gallon of liquid carbon along with that mark, uh, they're getting a jump start on working on all the benefits that a humic very does. Good. Yeah, very good. Appreciate that. But that ties right in with the, the manures and the litters Please. because uh, so many farmers today are looking at using uh, manures and litters, especially a, a lot of the poultry houses and the hog houses, and they need to get rid of this excess because they're growing more uh, livestock. Well, in doing that, you also provoke more weed issues and more uh, tie-ups in the soil because it has to try and break down a lot of that organic matter that they're putting out there. We have a picture on the screen for our viewers and with the XM people, this is, you'll many times you'll see big, huge brown piles out in some fields where farmers have piled up litter and it's, it's in a dry form and they'll come back in later on and load those up in spreaders and then spread that all over the field. Mm -hmm. Well, that's organic matter that has to be broken down by these microbes that Gary just talked about. So you can see how well our product fits in exactly with that farmer to stimulate that biology to help break it down. One of the other issues, especially uh, many of the hog producers, dairy producers are dealing with is liquid um, lagoons, which is a manure that they have to get rid of. Um, and then they run into issues with odors and, uh, you know, upsetting the neighbors in the, in the subdivision. But when you add our products in with that, it also helps to eliminate the odors, but it also helps that liquid manure become available uh, to the growing crop the next season. Uh, it helps to break it down and release those nutrients. So it helps to, to decompose all of that issue that they're dealing with when spreading these litters in the manures. Well, before we go to break here, how can humix help combat those issues you just mentioned for uh, litter and, and manure, Joe? Well, the other thing, too, that the farmers will encounter, and one of the big issues is litters and manures has high levels of phosphorus in it. And they have to keep putting this more and more on their fields. So they'll get into high levels of phosphorus uh, on their fields that they have to deal with. And this, this phosphorus must be grown out. It can't be... Uh, something else put on it and offset the phosphorus in the soil, it literally has to be grown out of the soil by crops that they're putting it on. So one of our, this is the mission of our liquid carbon product and dry carbon as well, is it helps this phosphorus to become released. Um, most of the time when farmers put on phosphorus, whether it's a fertilizer or manure, it will instantly tie up in the soil and it's not available to their crop. That's what our liquid carbon does, is makes it more available to the crop. So it acts mm -hmm. as a catalyst, really, is what it does. All right. And with that, uh, we have a lots of gr some great information. More to come. We look forward to hearing from you, though. You can read more about Monty's humic products at montysplantfood.com. We'll take our last break. Before we do, let me give our telephone number. Lines open. We want to hear from you with our time remaining. Toll free, whether you're watching or listening on Sirius XM Channel 80, Toll free 877-731-6733. More with Monty's Plant Food coming up right after this on Rural America Live. And welcome back to Rural America Live. Looking at a demonstration done earlier with our friends from Monty's Plant Food. And you see the telephone number to join us live with your questions for Gary and or Joe. 877-731-6733. Those people that were not with us earlier in the demonstration, Gary, uh, again, pretty uh, dramatic of the difference in uh, the solubility of the products. Well, again, what we have is Monty's product here with extreme uh, high solubility, and not only that, again, it has been activated to where it goes to work immediately upon application of your soil to do all those benefits that Joe has talked about. And here's a leading competitive product that, I don't know, it's been in there maybe 30 minutes or something Absolute, like that. Yeah. It's still sitting on the top, and, and it hasn't really done much of anything. No, and uh, you, you can't see anything. 
So is it soluble? Well, it's probably got some degree of solubility to it, but it hasn't been activated. So if you spend the money and put that on your soil, what, what are you gaining or how long is it going to take to see any benefit from it? Very good. Again, lines open for you with our time remaining to join us live here on Rural America Live. Let's talk. You can talk to Gary or Joe, 877-731-6733, 877-731-6733. We want to make sure that there are lots of other product. Uh, we have other programs that you've talked about these, uh, Joe, and uh, or who was it? Yeah, the, the product right. line, Gary, yeah. uh, that, that available to our viewers and listeners. Well, Mark, we've got over uh, 15 different products in the in the Monty's lineup to help you as far as your management program out there in the field. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, let's, I guess, let's just for the for the listeners over there, uh, we we've got a chart up there that shows our soil products, and we have consistently tonight talked about Monty's liquid carbon. And then we also have calcium plus, which is liquid carbon plus 1% chelated calcium. And then a nanobind, which is kind of a specialty product for really uh, bad fields. Uh, you got major problems with this that this can work on. And then in the middle, again, we've got our AgriHance Nutrient Management Program, our three-step program that we've talked about constantly. We've got our AgriHance S as a seed starter, we've got our AgriHance V to apply to any crop uh, in the vegetative stage, and then AgriHance R that is to be applied at the reproductive stage. And then finally on the right-hand side, we've got our fertility products that we refer to as plant food products, a 4-15-12, 8 and a 2-15-15. And the reason we say that they are plant food products is that they are in the uh, state that a plant takes up. A plant will take it up immediately upon um, uh, entering through the stomates of the leaf. There is no loss of the product in breakdown as with some other products. All right. And then, have, go ahead. Well, I would just say we had a yeah. se we had a second shot here, Mark. Okay. Of some other products yeah. that we have, and one of them is uh, AgriSweet, which is our liquid sugar. We have Microhance, which is a micronutrient package with uh, some nitrogen added to it. We've got the Monty's Dry Carbon in addition to the liquid carbon, and then we've got the Nano Boost, which is an absolute super. Penetrant, it's a super catalyst to add to your glyphosate and 2,4-D products to make them work far, far better. Very good. A couple of calls are here. I want to talk to you and get some questions answered, we hope. Jim from Illinois is our first caller tonight. Jim, welcome to the program. Yes, I have a question for the representatives from Monty mm -hmm. on how their products affect the use of cover crops in a corn-on-corn -corn operation. Well, our product in Illinois is uh, called Humic, Liquid Humic, and it will uh, tremendously stimulate the cover crop to put out a, a bigger root mass, uh, more tillage, uh, more leaf surface on top, and that will help you with weed control. It will help put more organic matter back into the soil on that corn-to-corn -corn, uh, type growing situation. Very good. We go to New Hampshire, our next caller. Jack is on the line. Jack, how can we help you tonight? Go ahead. Yes, I uh, uh, here in New England, and we plant a lot of hay and small and uh, uh, forage crops. Um, and was interested in um, if these products would apply to helping with hay production mm -hmm. and uh, and forage crops like uh, uh, soy gum, sedan grass, etc. Very good. All right. Thanks for the call. Well, Jack, the answer to that question is easy because the answer is yes. Uh, you can apply any of these products to any forage crop, and I would suggest maybe one or two of that. One of them would be the AgriHance V uh, at probably a half a gallon to uh, one gallon per acre, and that would be after every single cutting. And the other one may be uh, 8168 fertility product. Again, that would be one to two quarts after every single cutting. And I think what you're going to see is you're going to see increased growth 
But uh, more than that, you're going to see a much higher increase of the quality of the product that you are rolling, you're chopping, you're square baling, you're doing whatever it is. And uh, you'll just end up with a far higher quality product and I think you'll find out that your animals uh, are, gonna, are really gonna try and consume more. And of course, uh, uh, that's going to turn into hopefully more weight gain. Very good. Thanks for the calls. Uh, always looking for new products, Joe, and, and you have one to share. Kind of touched on it, teased the last time you yes, were with us. Yes, we've introduced actually two new products, or three actually, and we'll, but we'll mention two sulfur products that we've brought online. One is a liquid sulfur, 17. Uh, there's actually no other sulfur, liquid sulfur product like this on the market today, so uh, we look very forward to farmers using this next year. We have a dry sulfur 42 that can be blended in with uh, dry fertilizer applications uh, when the farmers go out and put their fertilizer on either this fall or next spring. And then we also have introduced a, uh, a nitrogen, a 7% nitrogen product called agri uh, which farmers can use to help foliar feed, boost some of their green up, uh, stimulate the plant. So those products are, are very uh, new in our uh, lineup and I would encourage uh, any of the farmers, any of the viewers, including your XM folks, can call Monty's. Uh, we can mail them a catalog that has all of our products in it. Um, they can also e email us or call in and be added to our email list that we put out a newsletter each month. And it's not just on Monty's products. It's all about kind of like the industry, what's going on and, and what's going on with crops and farmers and how to deal with certain situations so mm -hmm. we encourage our viewers to sign up for that as well very good and the products are available where well they're available through all, lots and lots of our co-ops they can also find that out on our website but independent co-ops will carry it does uh, many of the big co-op chains grow marks southern states uh, mfas uh, tennessee farmers uh, will also carry that so they can get it at most of the big uh, co-op chains, and if not, they can always call Monty's and we can direct them. Very good, and that being said, thank you very much for leading in. In case you were not able to uh, get in with your question tonight or have a question and uh, wanted to get an answer later, folks at Monty's will be manning their telephone lines this evening for at least an hour after the show is over. You can reach them toll-free. This number is toll-free as well, 800 Nine seven eight six three four two. Again, that's toll free eight hundred nine seven eight six three four two. And that leads us to, or just a couple of minutes left. Final thoughts from each one of you. Always good to see you, uh, each of you. Gary, you start with you and uh, thoughts you want to leave for viewers and listeners tonight. Well, Mark, I say this every single time, but no matter what we do on the farm, timing is everything. And, and I would also say that any listener out there who has any doubt as far as the validity of humic substances, get on the internet and Google it up. There's more information on there than you can ever think about reading. Uh, some of those articles are so complex, I can't even begin to understand them. So do a little searching and find one that is easy to read and makes sense. Very good. Good to have you here, Gary. Thank you very much. We have a minute left. Joe, okay. your final thoughts. Thank you very much, Mark. We've enjoyed being on the yeah, show. Good to have you guys back. Um, really, I guess it just boils down to the simple fact, if farmers and viewers will try our products, whether it's on their lawns or gardens or out in the field, uh, our product is a simple catalyst. It just makes whatever they're doing work better, perform better, and all we ever asked our viewers to do is just try it, and the product will, will work for itself. Very good. Thanks for being here again. Hope we have a great fall, yes. safe as well in the fields, and uh, look forward to having you back with us. Thank you very All much. All right. Thank you. We hope you've learned some uh, some solutions, perhaps, that will work for you, challenges that you're facing out in the fields as well. If you have additional questions, don't forget, the folks at Monty's available for at least an hour after our show. You can go to montysplantfood.com as well. I'm Mark Oppold. Good night, and thanks for joining us.